Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and Radio. A warm welcome to all of our viewers, both loyal and new, where we provide world-class education, entertainment, hope and inspiration. I'm Caroline Heward and I'm known as the Harley Street Stress Expert. Our show today is A Woman's Prerogative and we are in partnership with this programme with E360 TV. A warm welcome to our viewers on E360 TV as well as Rocco Worldwide and all our loyal regular viewers as well as our new viewers on Amazon Fire as well as our usual social media platforms YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn and X. Our topic today is going to be a very interesting one, and it is the impact of global events on society. I am joined by our panellists today, our esteemed panellists from all over the world. Today we have two from London, and our first panellist is Dr. Justina Mutali, all the way from London. Please welcome Dr. Justina. Thank you very much, Dr. Justina. Thank you, Caroline, and good evening, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are watching us from. Thank you. And I'd also like to bring on another very esteemed panellist all the way from London, Dr. Madeline Chan. Good evening, Caroline. Good evening, Dr. Justina Matali. And good evening, E360 TV viewers and USA Global TV and radio viewers. Oh, a nice warm welcome in the evening of uh, in it the is. UK. It's a lovely, <laughs> cool and warm evening. Not too hot and actually just perfect. Ooh, Before finally. we get into our topic, which is going to be a very, very interesting one, I'd like to remind our new, our, our loyal viewers and our new viewers about a VIP exclusive community. Please join an ex, uh, a exclusive VIP community and have first access to our newest videos, photographs and insights of the British royal family, which is live streamed on USA Global TV and radio and YouTube. And please also subscribe to both channels. That's USA Global TV and radio and Dr. Jacqueline. We are on a mission to achieve over 100,000 subscribers so we can share and spread our message throughout the world of hope, inspiration and entertainment as well as education. So before we get into the topic, please, ladies, in introduce yourself, saying a little bit about what you do and then we'll get straight into the topic. So Dr. Justina Matali, tell our viewers a little bit about what you do and how you help people. I am a gender advocate. I advocate for the achievement of gender equality and of course the empowerment of women and girls and uh, inspire women into leadership. I have done a book on the power secrets of female world leaders, so I, um, help women unleash their feminine uh, leadership spirit because I believe that the 21st century is a, a, a century for us to unleash uh, the feminine wealth and uh, feminine spirit into leadership. As we can see, uh, the U.S. might just be catching up with the rest of the world with the first ever uh, female president. 
Thank you, Dr. Justina. And Dr. Chan, please tell our viewers a little bit about what you do and how you help people. Thank you, Caroline. Well, what I do is I'm an award-winning singer-songwriter and a novelist and a TV presenter. And what I do, I bring them all into perspective in the way that I help you to connect to your creative heart genius. And at the same time, I can help you, my, the Songs For You team, we can help you to build, to tailor make a song for your brand, for your life story, a family generational song, to help you get through some trauma so that you have a song that you relate to but you don't have to keep you don't have to keep reactivating it and telling the story all the time um that's what i do so please do um contact me yeah thank you dr mazalyn chan and this lady has a wonderful voice i can totally vouch for her amazing it's such a powerful voice from a small person <laughs> Um, and for myself, I'm Caroline Heward. I'm your host on today's show, as well as being the Harley Street stress expert. I help people bust their stress. How do we do that? I work with my clients using root cause therapy and chakra psychology. I literally break through the patterns that create your repeating behavioral patterns that create your stress, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, or behavioral. Whether it's that relationship that you're complaining about or a physical ache and pain that you constantly get, you constantly have to go off and have uh, a lie down because you have a migraine that's come on? Is it you're complaining about a relationship or somebody at work? Or is it something that's happening on a regular basis that affects you in your everyday life? I help you break through the pattern that repeats that repeating cycle of how stress manifests in your body. So without further ado, I'd love to get into this very juicy topic. Now, when I was looking at this topic and I came up with the topic for Dr. Jacqueline and behind the scenes, Dr. Jacqueline is doing some amazing production work. So thank you very much, Dr. Jacqueline, for creating really powerful producing effects in the background. Um, I was thinking about times of world change. I was thinking about things that happened that affected me, that impacted me, that I remember times that that really had an effect, not just on myself, but globally, for the global collective. And there was a few things that came to mind as soon as I thought about this topic. And I'd like to share them with you and to get your thoughts as to how they may have impacted you at the time. <clears throat> They're very much the UK things that I remember. And one of the first ones was when Lady Di, Princess Diana died. It was a day of overwhelming mourning, not only just in the UK, but actually globally. And there'd never been an outpour for a royal in, this, in that way. There were flowers and people literally gathering at the gates. And I remember feeling an overwhelming sense of grief, an overwhelming sense of loss to our country. And I felt the same when our wonderful Queen Elizabeth II died. I actually couldn't believe that our beautiful queen, who I'd grown up with, had died. And that had a big, big impact on myself personally. And I was surprised at how much of an outpouring of grief and how many people queued to go and see her lying in state. I actually queued to go and see her lying in state because I just felt that it was a thing that it was historic and I needed to do. What are your thoughts about that, Dr. Justina? Did those two events impact you in any way? And what are your thoughts about the overwhelming grief that people felt, not only in the UK, but globally? Uh, the death of Diana, I used, at the time, I was working at the Commonwealth Secretariat. And as you know, the Queen was the head, is, was the head of the, of the Commonwealth, but I had traveled to Zambia. And uh, when my cousin told me that Diana had died, I thought she was just uh, trying to see how attached I might have been to the royal family that she, I didn't 
believe that she was telling the truth. So uh, then afterwards, I watched on uh, television, and of course, St. James's Palace is right was right is still right next to Marlboro House. My office was in Marlboro House, and we had the chapel, the chapel in which uh, they took Diana, I think, to pray, and where people were bringing flowers to um, St. James's Palace, but also to Clarence House and to. Uh, to the chapel, I can't remember the name of the chapel now, but it's right, it's attached to, to Marlboro House. So I could see my office there, and then I could see all this pouring pouring of grief of the people. And I, also what touched me the most was uh, uh, Prince we, William and Prince Harry when they escorted the, uh, the mother's uh, coffin during... Uh, <clears throat> The the, the 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 funeral procession i think that was uh, very touching and of course the queen she was the uh she was at the time of her death i think she was she had been the longest saving monarchy and also she was being head of the commonwealth she was of course uh, head of uh, had been head of many many countries um, countries that used to be part of the, the British Empire. So all those countries kind of were impacted by the death of the Queen and it, it changed a lot of things. She was still head of state for quite a, a number of uh, Commonwealth countries that uh, hadn't like gotten their full independence. So of course uh, that touched uh, a lot of people, but uh, <clears throat> There are other events in the world that kind of touched me. I remember, I think the one when I was uh, young, very young, was the, <laughs> perhaps the two of you were born, was the uh, uh, Apollo 11, when the, uh, uh, the, uh, the first, uh, <clears throat> the, the first uh, trip to the moon, we had to, I was in Zambia then, but we had to stay up all night to just to see that and i was very young then but i think it had a, a created a lot of uh, impression on me to think that uh, people could actually go to the moon and that we could watch it live at that time uh one event that happened but this i didn't notice it because i was too too young or maybe I hadn't even been born, was, for example, the killing of uh, John F. Kennedy. That shook the world because, uh, as you know, an American president is always considered to be the most powerful person in the world. And, of course, one would think that, that they had very strong uh, security that this could never happen to an American president. And uh, the way that happened to uh to JFK, you know, seeing it on television, reading about it and how people are touched up to today. I think you get people that were older then that heard when it happened, how they, um, they would say exactly what they were doing at the time that uh, they heard that uh, uh, JFK had been shot. We also, another one thing that really stood out to me was the 9-11. I had taken my daughter to the uh, orthodontist and my daughter was inside with the orthodontist and I was in the reception room and watching television. It was about, I think, one o'clock here. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what time it was. But, yes. And I was sitting there watching the movie and I thought, oh, that, uh, watching the movie, watching the news. For some reason, when I saw that, I didn't even realize that it's, that, it kind of didn't show like it's the news. I thought they were showing an advert for Die Hard 3 or Die Hard 4, one of those uh, Hollywood movies. That's the way it appeared to me until afterwards when I got home and they kept talking about it on the on the news to show that 9-11, uh, what happened today was called 9-11 and this is what really happened. And I thought, oh, I really witnessed this as it was happening on television, but I thought it was... a. Uh, it was a movie advert, so I could go on with uh, so many things that uh, have shaken the world, some that I have experienced myself and some that I have read from uh, from history. And some, like, even if you were not there, for example, the shoot, killing of uh, JFK, up to now it goes in people's minds, even if you just read about it. I so agree with the things that you've mentioned, um, just Dr. Justina. 
And those the events that you have talked about are ones that I have also, you know, was going to mention. Uh, the the um, JFK killing was, you know, that was at the time that I had just become born. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but it still was a huge thing. And one of the things I want wanted, one of the aspects I wanted to bring out of, of this is the fact that you're quite right in saying that people remember what they were doing at these different momentous times. And the other thing that I wanted to bring up is the fact that when something very tragic like this happens, it seems to bring people together. It brings the collective consciousness together to grieve, to, to be in a place almost of solidarity and to be in a place of resonance of collective grief, of collective trauma. What are your thoughts about what's been said and what I've just shared on that collective trauma and collective grief, Dr. Madeline Chan? Well, first of all, I want to say, Dr. Justina, you did an epic, an epic of impact of global events. Congratulations. Absolutely fabulous memory, beautiful heart. Love it. Right, Caroline, collective consciousness. Well, First of all, I find it really strange in the way that we're living in a, a modern world with technology, with AI and everything, yet our humanitarian, our compassionate souls are dinosaurs. Look what's happening in the world today. It's catastrophic. I'm not talking about just the, the weather or anything. I'm talking about why should it take someone that's an innocent life to be crucified or to be not crucified well yeah to be abused to be to be assassinated or murdered and then it creates a big impact to say hey there's a problem here we need to do something about this we shouldn't be in those times now we shouldn't be we should we're now coming into that golden age therefore it's the new earth and it's almost everything at the moment is all getting all conjured up. So the collective consciousness, it's like a hoover. It's all getting all brought up to the surface. And yeah, it's chaotic out there. And we've got to be careful not to lose ourselves in it because some of it is false. Some of it is propaganda as well. And we don't know what is the propaganda, but the fact is, we're not getting full truths. But one thing, though, I really feel, and I go back to it, is the way that it's it's terrible how we have the angels of mercies, people that come in in embodiment and offer themselves to be this in this role, life, to, to so that other we can evolve and learn from our mistakes on the collective consciousness. And I feel that, honestly... We shouldn't be at that place still. We shouldn't be. And it's such a shame. Great shame. I concur with what you were saying in terms of we've we've evolved a long way technically and we've advanced a long way in terms of our world connection to each other technically through social media, through all the different activities of, of technical media and platforms that we can become more united and I feel that the world has become smaller because of the technology and the advancements in social media and how we connect we're here now on a global platform in different places and you know Dr Jacqueline is hosting this platform in America and I'm in one side of the UK in the north part of the country and you are in the in the capital and this is one of the things that I feel that I have witnessed that the world has become so much smaller and yet at the same time even though we're becoming more aware of things that are happening and things that are going on we seem to be less in touch I quite agree with you Dr Chan less in touch with the emotional connection of chaos and catastrophes that are happening 
in the other parts of the world. And that brings me very neatly into a segue. When I was very young, and I can't remember when it was, I think it was around the 80s, uh, mid 80s, there was a um, song that I was singing, having no understanding or idea what it represented, what it meant. And you might remember it, it was Free Nelson Mandela. And I was singing it like to my heart's content and had no idea about the backstory about why the song had come into fruition, why the song was in the charts and why the young people, I was young, was singing it to uh to as if like it was like um, a nursery rhyme you know it was a chart topping hit and then i found out what it meant the story of somebody that I was fighting for many decades for freedom for freedom of its people nelson mandela i didn't even know it was a person and this is how i felt that i was touched i was reached and I learned about world events through song, through our pop stars, through our charts, and through the fact that some people felt so passionate that they made a song about freeing Nelson Mandela. And what was beautiful about that is that it brought to attention lots of lots of understanding about the plight of Nelson Mandela and what had happened to him, his people, and why he was incarcerated. And I became very, very strong and very soulful about this beautiful person that was fighting for freedom in a non-violent way. And I'm gonna take my, my question to Dr. Justina Batali. What are your thoughts about what I've just shared and the fact that I had no understanding or idea about the real story I was singing? And this is how it raised conscious awareness to the world about the plight of Nelson Mandela and its people. Uh, yeah, for me, it's a different experience. As you know, I'm from Zambia and we are right next to South Africa. So in fact, my country, Zambia, helped South Africa gain in the, its independence. Uh, we were housing the, uh, the uh, South African uh, freedom fighters were based in, um, in Zambia. And of course, in uh, some of them were based in Zambia. And of course, there were some that were... Uh, based in other parts of uh, Southern Africa. And uh, my country, Zambia, so helped house those people. We helped to mentor them, also help them uh, economically. And uh, of course, embraced them as our own brothers and sisters. And up to now, some of the uh, Zambian women and Zambian men had children from those people that uh, were part of the ANC that were residing in Zambia. I remember um, the area that I used to live in, there was a group that, uh, a group of the N NC people that used to live there. And during the, uh, I think it was the World Cup, 1986 World Cup, they all came to my house to watch TV so they could see the, uh, the World Cup. So that was very, very close to me and uh, close to heart and we knew we followed the story because we learned it as part of our history, as part of our civic education, as part of our current affairs education and uh, what happens in the world. So we had a different story. And of course, uh, <clears throat> by the time when Mandela, uh, Nelson Mandela was released uh, from prison, I was already in the UK and I was working at the Commonwealth Secretariat and the first international trip that he made was to come to London. And uh, we came all, he came to visit us at our office and uh, we had to line up for him come walk with, uh, with our Commonwealth Secretary General and all of us shaking his hand. And in the um, afternoon we had a garden party 
uh, for him with the queen. So uh, that was very, wow. I, I had that kind of uh, personal experience with uh, uh, Nelson Mandela and also, of course, an attachment uh, with South Africa up, uh, up, up to today. And we understood exactly the, uh, the events that were happening in, in South Africa and where the world was at and who was playing what role, which countries were supporting and which countries were making things difficult for, um, for the black South Africans to, uh, to gain their independence. And like I said, my country, Zambia, we gave a lot of support. I gave <laughs> my kind of own support, but allowing these guys to, once in a while they would come to my house sometimes to eat, but also the biggest thing was to come and watch, uh, watch football. But I wanted to go back to, um, the song, uh, how uh, this how songs bring uh, people together. I remember during the time of, uh, I think Vietnam. We were very young then, but we used to sing these songs about Vietnam and peace. Peace and love is the message, you know, like that. That is how we learned about world affairs. Sometimes through music, uh, through song, and as young people, you keep singing these songs, and yet those songs we're talking about what was actually happening in the world. I think another event that really touched the world was uh, Live Aid. I was when gonna all say the Live artists Aid. Get, got together to sing <laughs> for, uh, for Ethiopia, that really, really uh, moved the world. And I was one of those people that was touched. And up to now, I can sing <laughs> some, some of those songs and we go back and play uh play those videos to um you know just to relieve some of those moments and like uh, dr madeline was saying in those songs that uh michael jackson uh, curated and some of the uh those artists they had a message for the world but for some reason <laughs> the world doesn't understand didn't taking that message when you talk about uh, human consciousness, because they talked about saying, we are the world, we are the children, we are the ones who make a brighter day. So it's all of us, the whole world. If we fight this, if we stop this hunger in Ethiopia, we are saving our own lives, but we seem not to have uh, picked it up. There's another song that uh, <clears throat> comes to mind. This one is from uh, Elvis Presley, I can't. Rem I think it's called the "In the Ghetto," where he talks about um, a child being born in the ghetto and the mother crying because she's worried that one day this boy, this boy, will grow up to be an angry young man. And he's saying, "People, can you not see what is happening? We should do something about this because the guy, then the guy kind of grow, grow, grows up. He steals a gun or steals a car, and he gets shot, and this keeps happening." up to today a lot of uh, people in uh, what you call disadvantaged or underprivileged communities they are having these children children are being born they've got nothing to eat no one is helping them and yet we have surplus in the world somebody somewhere once said that uh, if you look in every boardroom <laughs> if you just uh, strip of the suits of all those people that are standing there elegantly and talking about pushing the world forward and at the basic of it each one of us is still a stone age man so that is why you see that we have all these riots going on look at what is happening in the uk or what is happening in uh israel uh, Gaza, Gaza, Palestine, Ukraine, Russia, the Sudan, Yemen, everywhere. We also, I don't know if you know the uh, <clears throat> Eckhart Tolle, he wrote a book about the power of now. And in that book, he said something like, of course, we have made uh, 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 medical and uh, technology advancements, as uh, Dr. Caroline had um, <clears throat> had talked about uh, globalization and the World Wide Web and for us to be here, that if the fluttering of a butterfly in the, in the Amazon will be felt far, far, will repercrate all around, all around the world. And this is globalization, how we are now all interconnected. Of course, we've made medical and technolo uh, the technological advancement, but Eckhart Tolle said, we can't claim to have evolved as humans 
especially human consciousness, because all we have done with the technological advancement, for example, and the new knowledge that we have, we have moved from um, during the Stone Age from killing one person with a club at a time to having one person push the button of a, of a computer and kill the whole of humanity. So at the basis of it, we are always, another philosopher said, he didn't understand why that uh, humanity is so cruel to itself. And we are the only species that are trying to annihilate ourselves, you know, to, uh, to terminate humanity because every day we are coming up with things that are working towards terminating. It's either we are trying to terminate a person because they are black, because they are green, because they have a different um, political ideology, because they have a different religious belief, because they are a woman, because they have a different sexual orientation. Every time, as uh, Dr. Madeline said, we are trying to, to find something that is separating us rather than bringing us together now that we live in a globalized world. It's such a catch-22 that uh, we don't know how we are going to, uh, to bring that together. In um, Africa, for example, Nigeria, there are loads of rioting in Nigeria. There's rioting in uh, Kenya. There's rioting like here in the UK, there's rioting in, uh, and also when you look at the, some of the presidential debates, you just wonder what is going on here. Shouldn't these people, like I have my nephew, he was surprised, he was eight, he's only 17 and he watched the debate between uh, <laughs> the two presidential candidates before now and how they went so personal and almost what young people say went wrong on, one another, then you think, what is the, uh, what example are they giving to the young people? And you know, when we were growing up, we looked, they, we, we had role models that we looked up to, but now you find that the priests have done something wrong. This celebrity has done this something wrong. And every day your heart just gets, you get a heartbreak from hearing these things. And then you get this, um, disillusioned with uh, humanity and it's very very sad uh, for young people to be growing up in a time like this one would have thought I was very hopeful when I had children that they would live in a better world than I had been living but it looks like the better world is just confined to technology but not to like human behavior or human relationships or making the world a better place for everybody else. Thank you, Dr. Justina. Wow, there's a lot there. Do you have any thoughts that you want to share in terms of what you've heard that Dr. Jeff, Dr. Justina has shared? <laughs> well, first of all, I would just want to say it's it's Mer thank you, Caroline. It's Mercury retrograde. Therefore, communication is all squiggly, 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 because it's the, the moon. It's the full moon yeah. and it's Mercury retrograde. So we're all getting into this weird energy um so from what i can remember dr Justina, and that was a lot again i congratulate you in every way <laughs> wow my mind is kind of i was all ready and prepared as going you know ready going chick, 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 and then suddenly okay it's your turn it's like blank 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 <laughs> okay <laughs> going back to the song live aid absolutely that thing with with songs and musicians all i can say and contribute to this is that where we're not allowed to say things politically at that time during that time we portrayed it in a song in a poet in a sonnet in an instrumental in the music to provoke the emotional body the emotional feelings and have a reaction to it so at the same time, the global events, the impact of global events, we also have to look at the world that we don't see, at what yeah. we don't hear from our perception of our human eye and our human ears. It's called subliminal, the subliminal messages. This is what we need to, what, what one 
what we, we really should start to take on board collectively rather than what we see in front of our eyes. Also, we need to connect to our intuition and ask our inner self, is this true? Is this resonating with you? Does this, does this make sense? And if it doesn't sit with you, then instead of just agreeing because, you know, like, um, like the sheep, you know, agreeing like the sheep or a clone, go out there and do your research before actually claiming this, stating that. Because all you're going to do is fuel that energy, fuel, fuel it, where if it's not a truth, all it's going to do is become bigger and bigger and go into the collective human consciousness. So it's about breaking it down and doing the research. Because research, education and feeling is what's important now. It's the perfect balance. Having the, 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 the right intuition but also having the right intellect for it. I'm in agreement with what you're saying, because <laughs> there are always, you know, they say there are two sides to every story. And there certainly is when we, when we look at global events, there are always two sides. There's what you see, what you hear, and then there's also another aspect from the person saying it and how you're receiving it. And what I do want to do is I do want to look at some positive things that are happening. And right now, very topically, we have the Olympics that's going on in Paris. Even though during the opening ceremony, it was pouring down with rain, I felt very sorry for the people that were performing because they were the rain was just literally pouring down on the river um, of where they were performing on the baits. But what that does is when we have like sort of any sports events or the Olympics, is that it brings people together. It brings people in a place of solidarity, in a place of celebration, and also in a place of honouring the best of the different countries, honouring a skill and honouring people for their contribution to society, to the world, to themselves, and actually giving people the aspiration of how they can be better and how they can give something very positive to the world. What are your thoughts about this, Dr. Chan, in terms of being in that collective environment? And I've mentioned the Olympics because that's very topical. And it's right now, it's happening right now. And people are coming from all over the world to be at the Olympics. And there's also football as well. You know, and the, the thing about football, and I'm in England and we're all in England, is that this <laughs> was a song, you know, that, uh, you know, it's coming home. I didn't even know what that meant because I'm not a big football <laughs> fan. But, you know, even my little nephew was singing, it's coming home, it's coming home. And I'm thinking, what's he talking about? What's he singing about? <laughs> and very young children. And I feel that that patriotism of people when they're in those kind of sporting events is infectious and the vibration, the frequency of people becomes much more positive, much more emotional in a good way. What are your thoughts about that, Dr. Chan? Oh, I absolutely agree with you, Caroline. Honestly, in a World Cup event, in a big stadium arena, and everyone is there, if only, and they're all there, raising the vibration, supporting their team, and also just a high vibration, can't we just have that high vibration for humanity? <laughs> Plus, Glastonbury. Glastonbury attracts so many people. It's it's a yearly festival and it's just, it's everyone looks forward to it. As soon as Glastonbury is finished, they're booking tickets already. Uh, the, the tickets are sold within the, the, the month straight after the festival for the year after. Isn't that amazing? 
it's quite incredible, isn't it, how sport, and I'm not a big sport person, but you, you can't help but like be riding on the fact that people are celebrating, they're commiserating, but it's a time that it brings people together in such a wonderful and a positive way. And um, I can't help but get high on the fact that people are singing you know and in the football here they're singing sweet caroline <laughs> so I, i'm serenaded <laughs> when when the football is on and i'm not a football fan but if i ever mention what my name is people will actually say oh sweet caroline they start singing to me especially in football time um, so this is something that singing, song, always raises and lifts us and it makes us feel different. It makes the collective feel much higher in their vibration. And this is how we can heal, as Dr. Chan would attest. This is actually how we can heal the world through song, through coming together collectively. Yes, there is a lot of trauma and events that take place. In the, in the world that bring the collective into fear and trauma and demise. But there is also a collective environment where song, where coming together. And one of the other ones that I can think of, and it's just come to mind, is Poppy Day. That's, that's a remembrance of our fallen soldiers. Even though it was way, way before I was born, in World War II, it, it still feels, it has a resonance of we remember, we remember the fallen and why they fought for their country, why they fought for freedom. And even though it was terrible and I do not condone war, it was still a wonderful, it's a wonderful remembrance and it brings people together in a place of collective peace. We remember, so we never do it again. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. M M Justina? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, of course, uh, we should always remember. They always say that uh, somebody who doesn't know their past doesn't know what their future or how to navigate uh, navigate their present and how to venture forth into, into the future. And about uh, the energy, the positive energy that comes with uh, a lot of people gathered in one place and all in happiness and all in anticipation of uh, seeing something good really uplifts uh, humanity at that point. And like it, I think it does say in the Bible, wherever one or two are gathered, there also I will be. So those who believe in God, we know that when, when wherever there's one or two more two people gathered, God is there, and so He's even more present in a bigger in a bigger gathering. So you have this um, divine uh, divine experience of humanity being together and being happy together, singing together, holding hands together, waving their hands together, and uh, screaming on top of their voice, for example, if, one, uh, if it's in football, when there's a goal, a, a score, and of course with the Olympics, when, you know, at the end of the, uh, <clears throat> is it a match, and once somebody wins, everybody gets happy for that person. They don't, it's, I think in the Olympics, most of the time is where everybody just is happy for the winner and not worried what country uh, the winner is coming from. And of course, each country goes there. It is a competition. They would like to bring those, uh, those medals, but there's always that happiness. There's always that uh, divine bringing together of the people when, uh, <coughs> when somebody scores or comes first in their, in their race. But, um, you know, um, Dr. Madeline is talking about this subliminal uh, and this consciousness that we need to pay attention to. Somebody said somewhere when you, you to know the times you are living in and what time, what kind of time, listen to the music, you know, like the current music now is not as, um, uh, I don't know whether to call it light or sober, so as some music, for example, in the 80s or 90s. This time, it's very almost violent music. 
So it's like we are living in violent times. And when you hear, there was a time when most of the popular songs were love songs. <laughs> but now the, the, the young people's music is very quite disturbing and sometimes you could hear a beat in the background and try to sing along and you find that the the music is just full of swear words or sometimes it's where they are talking about killing one another or chopping off the other person's head and um, and things like that now talking about the uh, <clears throat> this year's olympics in france of course that was a, a a wonderful moment for people to come together but what it got overshadowed by everybody complaining, for example, about the opening ceremony. There were a lot more. Com it's been said that now people are being encouraged to be more outrageous, to be more hateful. The more hateful they say things, is then they have more uh, a much bigger following. You were talking about... Um, people doing their research to know whether what they are hearing is true or not true. But people are being encouraged to be outrageous. The more outrageous you are, the more people will listen to you. Even when you go on social media, you notice that those people who will be saying something against another person, a political party fighting the other party, that is where everybody will rush to. For example, I work with young people and we give uh, scholarships to advance their education. When you compare how many people are following our page to people who are following the pages of gossip, the pages of young women twerking, the pages of boys and girls fighting, they follow them in millions. But when you are giving something that, that should be helping them or helping advance humanity and the thinking of humanity and the <laughs> tweaking of their psyche, they, they are not going to look there. So I noticed that um, all the goodness of the, uh, of the Olympics had been overshadowed by the complaints of the opening when people were upset about the Last Supper. That is the first thing that I saw. I didn't see the opening. All I just suddenly started seeing was how angry people were about this, that they were mocking the, 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 the Last Supper. And then the past few days, it's been about that uh, female boxer that other people thought was trans or that it was a, a man and they fought with a woman. And that is all that people are talking about. So it is easy now. We are living in a time where people can't think or there's too much information but humans someone did say that are more drawn to the negative than the positive so the more outrageous somebody is the more hateful the more negative that is where everybody is going is going to go and the propaganda uh, barack obama had said we live in very difficult times where a lie would have gone around the world 365 times in one day and by the time you try to correct that, nobody's even going to read it. It's not going to read the correction of the facts because everybody has already taken in the lie. It has engulfed everybody. And for some reason, people find it easier to believe the lie. That is why it's easy to do all this propaganda than to believe the, uh, to believe the truth. So it is, uh, of course, humans can come together, but there's always, they are going to be picking at what is negative in those things as they have picked at what is negative in the Olympics. And thank you, Dr. Justina. We have completely run out of time. Thank you so much for your contributions. We really have overly run out of time. Thank you so much to our wonderful panelists, Dr. Justina and Dr. Madeline Chan. And we look forward to seeing you at the same time, which is 2 p.m. Eastern time and 7 p.m. Um, uh, London time, Greenwich, uh, British summer time, sorry. And now over to our wonderful sponsors. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline, for your wonderful broadcasting behind the scenes. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye bye for now. USA Global TV and Radio proudly presents our partner and sponsor, Mr. Philip Sykes and the British School of Excellence. Building confidence, changing lives. And now proudly presenting the Polished Professional.
on a transformative journey with the British School of Excellence's comprehensive suite of masterclasses crafted to elevate your professional and personal life. Eight outstanding modules will elevate you to the next level. Module one, exploring life's purpose, delves into the depths of self-discovery, guiding you to chart your unique path to fulfillment and success. Module two, mastering professional presence and confidence. This masterclass is a deep dive into the art of self-assurance and commanding presence, which is essential for standing out in today's competitive landscape. Module three, learn the secrets of visual impact, how to curate a personal style that amplifies your professional brand. Module four, mastering professional etiquette and communication excellence, navigating the nuances of corporate interaction with grace and tact. Module five, elegance and eloquence. We impart powerful techniques to captivate and persuade any audience with your oratory skills. Module six, unlock the potential of your emotional intelligence, EQ, and harness the ability to connect, empathize, and lead with emotional savvy. Module seven, mastering DISC, building a gateway to understanding behavioral styles, fostering better personal and professional relationships. Module eight, mastery and dining etiquette, building your confidence to perfect the subtleties of dining with finesse, enhancing your social savviness at any table. Step into the Polish Professional Program where poise, elegance and excellence aren't just taught, they're instilled for life. Join us to redefine your potential and polish your professional edge. To learn more, go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. The British School of Excellence are investors in people. Let us invest in you. Five Little Known Secrets for Dementia Caregivers with Tracy Cram Perkins. Hi there. I am Tracy Cram Perkins, the host of the Dementia Home Care Show here on USA Global TV and Radio. I am also the author of the book of the same name. And you'll see this QR code. This is for an extended version of the same talk. So if you want to see the full hour long version, feel free to scan the code and go to that website. Stick with me. We'll talk about five little known secrets to make it a little easier to do dementia caregiving. What you're seeing on the left-hand side is a healthy aged brain, age 55 and above. The one you're seeing on the right is an Alzheimer's disease brain. It is a moderate disease. It is shrinking. It has holes in it. The memories that were in those holes no longer exist. When you're learning something, let's say in kindergarten, you learn how to tie your shoelace. Well, then by the time you're in second grade, your brain remembers that information from tying the shoelace and applies it so you can learn more quickly how to tie more complex knots. So the brain is hardwired to do this for us. So it helps us learn faster so it doesn't take as long to acquire knowledge. The brain is looking for the information and they pick the closest to wherever that hole is. Let's look at some tips that we can use to help do that. These are five simple tools you can use as a dementia caregiver to help your loved one. The whiteboard is a useful tool in recording the day's activities and the answers to repetitive questions. The calendar clock is a very useful tool to orient your loved one on the day, the date, and the time and remind them of upcoming appointments. The communication cards are a great tool to bridge the gap when they can no longer tell you what's wrong. And then there's the pill minder for when your loved one is still able to take pills but needs prompting. The final tool I want to share with you is the memory book. It tells your loved one's story. It's a great tool for distraction, redirection, also as a conversation starter and telling you where they are in their story so you know how to answer their questions. Music is probably the most powerful tool in your toolbox after laughter. Music is a way to maintain connection. It sticks with your brain longer than any other thing, including reading. When you're having an issue with somebody, you can play their favorite music if you move them to another room. Something that makes them happy. Or you can start singing songs together from their childhood. These are some of my favorite books for caregivers. 
My show airs on the third Tuesday of every month, and you can view past episodes on YouTube. Thank you, everyone. This program has been brought to you in part by Tracy Cram Perkins. Connect with her and order her book at tracycramperkins.com. For more information about Alzheimer's disease, support resources, and how you can help, contact the Alzheimer's Association at 1-800-272-3900 or visit their website at www.alz.org. They offer 24-7 helpline support and a wealth of information to assist you and your loved ones.